everybody hope you're well let's talk about the challenges in the market okay it's all great doing videos about you know becoming millionaires and these are the properties that I did and these are all the mortgage clients that I've helped let's talk about some of the issues that's going on right now the bad news what's going on people losing out on properties uh, chains breaking offers taking too long solicitors taking too long um, what's going on with re-evaluations of affordability with the lenders so these are the practical things that are happening right now so let's talk about it get right into it one of the biggest challenges right now is time okay and what I mean by that is um, I'll give you an example we probably had about six offer extension requests uh, in the last couple of days right so that's people that we've done the mortgages for they've been offered and it's been sitting at legal stage now uh, it could be a right to buy that they're waiting for the local authority searches to come back it could be the other side are waiting on a chain but fundamentally there's a lot of delays going on at solicitor stage now it could be uh, you know solicitors not getting back in time irresponsive solicitors there's got to be problems with the chains but fundamentally what's happening is people are not being able to complete in time so what happens they normally is a bit of a back and forth because they come to us and go look we're going to need an extension um, now there are some challenges with that one of the problems is um, the solicitors don't want to do a lot of work okay so they always ask the the clients uh, brokers to ask for the extension the problem is a lot of the lenders don't want to see the extension offers come from the broker and let me explain why essentially as a broker once you have offered once you've made the offer for the client so the client's offer has been issued by the lender you're almost out of the loop because you don't know when the searches are coming in what the problem is with the questions what the problems is with the other side so you're totally out of the loop and then all of a sudden five months later uh, the client phones you and says do you know what I need an extension can you get an extension for me well the lenders don't really want to see it from a broker because otherwise every broker will just ask for an extension they want to hear it from generally not all lenders but generally they want to hear it from the solicitor because the solicitor can actually put in writing why they need the extension and how long they need the extension for right so it's because they're close to it and they've got control over that process it's no point broker asking for the extension because if the broker asks for the extension it says uh, will be done by next month the broker has got nothing to do with it the broker has got no influence on that date okay all the broker could do is say can I do it ne next month where the solicitor has got some influence uh, over the process so that's the logic behind why a solicitor is normally preferred to ask for the extension however that's not always the case right um, so what happens solicitors don't really like doing a lot of work okay because you know to be fair to them uh, they're under a lot of pressure right now so they push it back to the broker broker then pushes it back to the solicitor and then they work it out amongst them and they ask for the extension now I've actually just done a uh, I've sent an email out to some of the lenders because all of a sudden this is an issue it wasn't an issue two months ago okay all of a sudden it is an issue so lenders have got different policies some lenders will not extend so we had Virgin back uh, yesterday saying our offers are valid for what they're offered and if they if they don't meet those times it's a new application full stop then you got lenders that will say well we'll do it for two weeks um, maximum then you've got some lenders that will do it for um, a month standard okay so there are different rules and different timelines so you can't get there are some if it's a new build they'll give you longer it might be three months it might be six months you know it just depends on the type of lender who the lender is the type of transaction if it's a new build um, the property hasn't been built yet or there's a problem there may be some more leeway so there are some uh, lenders so it's important when we're going through the process this is going to come up now and this is going to be an issue okay now why is it an issue why is it so important now it's because of the changes that are happening so I'll give you an example we had a guy we got him a mortgage offer a couple of months ago three months ago on his way thank you very much by am left a lo lovely review for on our website you've been fantastic great we shook hands wonderful three months later comes back and goes guess what by am I did a survey I did a home buyer survey myself and basically what's come out of that survey is I've managed to reduce the deal by six thousand pounds so 
And I said, okay, well, that's a material change because now the purchase price has changed. We've got to push that back into the lender. We've got to tell the lender because it's got to be reflected in the documentation that's been issued to the solicitor. So it needs to be re-offered. The problem is that's a material change. So lenders see that as a material change. What that means is the case goes back in with most lenders. It gets re-credit checked. So that's important. Okay, so you've got to be aware of that. It gets re-credit checked. Also, this is the bigger problem, right? It gets re-affordability checked. There's the, there's the big problem. Three months ago, rates were lower. Their lender's affordability calculations were working out giving you more. There wasn't a triple of cost of living in terms of utility bills. All of those things are now reflected. So essentially, that person, uh, on that particular case, the lender came back and said, yeah, thank you very much for notifying us. Not only um, we can't give that £6,000, but by the way, now the client can borrow £17,000 less than what they had on their offer. And we're panicking, going, oh, no, 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 no. Can we have what it was? And they said, no. Um, basically, it's a material change. So essentially, um, we can't bo you can't borrow uh, what we originally offered you on. Because now we've, it's gone back into the underwriting, we've had to re-credit uh, re check it and redo the uh, affordability. So this is what the problem is. So when there's chain breaking, when people can't complete in time, this is the bigger problem. It's not the offer extension, it's essentially you going in and it's going to be under it. Now, majority of the lenders, thankfully, have come back to me and said, we'll still keep the same rate. Because there is a problem, if you go for an extension, they may come back and go, well, actually, that's a material change. That product's no longer available. We're now putting you on this product. And guess what? What's happened with the rates? Rates have gone up. Okay, so, you know, you could be hit in two folds. Uh, the product changes as well as the affordability changes. However, majority of the ones that are coming back to me, and it's worth double checking at that time, they said, no, we'll honor the product. However, we will only extend it by two months, three months, and we have to run an affordability, and we have to run... Um, um, we have to run a, a, a credit check and so forth. So this is what's happening to cases. Now imagine I've had six of those, okay? So what we have to do as brokers, bear in mind we've done the work, it was all, it was all done. We, it now comes back in and we have to rerun affordability checks just to make sure that it still fits affordability. Just in case, on that, on that, by the way, on that case, what we had to do is literally me and the underwriter, and then I'm phoning the client, we had to extend, thankfully, what we could do is extend the term by a few years, which meant the affordability was adjusted. It meant that they could get what they wanted. However, the client essentially is now paying for the mortgage for a longer period. We had to explain that to the client. We had to put it in writing. We had to go through the quotes. We had to tell them what it meant instead of doing a 30-year mortgage, doing a 32-year mortgage. And the client was happy and still wanted to progress that. So there's a whole load of, there's a chain of work that needs to happen once that's happened. So just bear that in mind. If there is, things are not going to plan, these are the repercussions of um, uh, you know, what, what's going to happen with, with material changes. Now, what's a material change? Material change is a fundamental change to the case. So it could be lost the property, want to submit a new property. So that's a material change. It could be, obviously, income's gone up, income's gone down things like that, it's a material change. Okay, if it affects it, you've lost your job in the middle, affects it, it's a material change. Purchase price, changes with the purchase price, changes with that, material change. Okay, so those things are fundamental changes that have to be reported back to the lender and the lender will do their own process of underwriting depending on which lender we have. So that's what's happening in the market. So if you've had your mortgage offer and you're going through the process, or you're going, you're looking to go for the mortgage offer process, it's important to understand um, that bit. Now, what are lenders doing about it? I had a meeting with Santander the other day and they said they're looking, and they haven't done so, they're looking to extend their offers because they're getting killed with this stuff. Because of the delays in the chains, okay, this is causing problems. And fundamentally, it wasn't a problem before because when they came back, it was similar rates. But now, it's not the rates, 
it's the affordability which is killing a lot of the deals okay so that's the problem chains breaking so a lot of let's the buy so i do a lot of let's the buy cases where um, the clients are going to keep their existing residential we put that on a buy to let mortgage maybe capital raise a little bit to put money down on a new purchase one of those deals falls through uh, fundamentally the purchase when the purchase falls through the, the, the let to buy falls through because a lot of the lenders have got a simultaneous rule where they say look we'll allow you to pull the money out and remortgage it and put it onto a buy to let as long as the both transactions are done on the same day well of course if you lose one of the property the other property's offer is going to run out because it can't be done on the same day so again fundamental problem there causing issues within the market right affordability as i've mentioned a lot of the lenders have changed their affordability. You could literally borrow thousands of thousands more three months ago, four months ago, now, right? So what's happened? What are the lenders doing about it? Well, some of the lenders have actually been proactive and what they've done is they've adjusted their affordability. So let's say they could only go to four and a half times, they now go to five times income to make that affordable okay but not all they have and and ONS figures the official of, office of national national statistics or something they their figures office of ONS office of national statistics yeah I was right um, basically um, a lot of the lenders are feeding in to that uh, data so when they pull that data on it doesn't matter if you say you're only spending 150 pounds on your supermarket shop they will go right a family of four you know are typically are spending I don't know 350 400 pounds a month so that's the that's the figure that they will use now that has an impact on your affordability so um, that's that's what we're finding on the mortgage side. In regards to demand, I'll be honest with you guys, um, and, and this is what I think going forward, right? It's definitely, um, it's definitely getting slower, slower, right? In terms of the market, not us, we're quite busy, but the market is definitely getting slower. The problem is, uh, it's on the residential side of things, um, not so much on the buy to let, the residential side of things, what you've got is not enough properties that are worth it. Okay, what I mean by that is, when you look at an area, say there's only 20 properties there, right? About 15 of them are actually the ones that people want to live in. They're the ones with the gardens. They're the one with the office. They've got they've got extra room. So what's happening is, all of those ones, the properties that you'd want to live in, they're the ones that have been hammered in terms of they are increasing in value because there's so much demand for those 15. Then there's a lot of crap on the market. Okay, people that are just chancing it or what I'll say by crap is overpriced, okay? People are just thinking, well, if I get that, I'll sell it, okay? So there's a lot of that stuff happening. And watch out. Because of the demand of a lot of buy to let investors, you only have to look at YouTube and see all these new people that want to be millionaires and be buy to let investors. So that is feeding through a whole host of people, certainly in the Midlands and up north, uh, um, valuing, you know, pushing the values up of properties that frankly not worth what they're supposed to be worth. Okay. So there's a lot of properties that are sub substandard properties that are on the market right now. So what happens is that's also causing problems because you're going to buy a property. <coughs> you want to buy it. You'll buy it for, I don't know, 150 K. Okay. You'd want to spend that 150 K, but the surveyors go there and they'll down value it. A lot of down valuations happening on properties just because people think their properties are worth more than what they actually are. So that's what I'm finding on the market. Okay, it's not all positive. It's not all, oh yeah, we're doing this, we're doing that. These are the fundamental practical issues that are happening right now. The key to these things, one, work with a solicitor, that's quite good. Two, work with a broker, that's quite good. Three, um, work with uh, your own surveyors in terms of surveying the property once uh, maybe a more offer has been accepted get a home buyer report so you know that if there's any problems you know what's happening um, uh, if you're doing a right to buy um, or, or you know a council house and things like that be mindful that local authorities are really behind be mindful if you are buy to let investors and looking to do bridging finance and renovate properties and pull money out and do buy to let remortgages all of those things be mindful of the land registry land registry is taking a couple of months just to register properties so if you're looking to buy that property and turn it around via bridge and pull some money out. Land registry is an issue, although there are some lenders that will work off the solicitor's uh, instruction letter or the land registry submission documents, a TR1 form. So just be mindful that there are issues around uh, 
delays in the in the chain and those delays are affecting residential and buy to let um, uh, mortgages and i'll catch you on the next one guys like and subscribe and always and i'll see you next time the content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.